landing boat would be about three miles away. You may already know, lightning and thunderstorms are mainly found in tropical and subtropical latitudes. Now, you may ask why that is. Well, the answer to this question is pretty self-explanatory. In these tropical latitudes, the surface temperature of the Earth is higher, meaning there's a stronger convection between the sky and the ground. This results in more frequent thunderstorms and lightning. Now that we understand lightning, it is important to understand its partner, thunder, and how lightning creates thunder. For a brief moment, lightning heats the air up to 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit. This causes the air to explode outwards. The, mass, the massive pressure in the initial outward shock wave decreases rapidly with increasing distance and within 10 yards or so has become small enough to be recognized as a sound we call thunder. So, based on what Matteo said, thunder can be heard from 25 miles away. The closer to the lightning you are, the higher the frequency of the sound, creating a tearing sound. But as you move farther away from the frequency, the noise of the lightning subdues, leading to a sound that is more of a grumble. The heated air that explodes outward creates a sharp increase in air pressure. This increase in air pressure will begin to compress the surrounding air around the lightning channel. As this heated air cools, a shock wave is created. This shock wave will then move in all directions from the lightning channel and will create thunder. This pressure wave is actually harmful for humans. It can cause chemical and electrical damage and is often the cause of migraines and headaches to people in the area of the pressure wave. The change in pressure during a thunderstorm can worsen the symptoms of arthritis, asthma, and even sleep apnea. The lightning in a thunderstorm can be heard up to 10 miles away from the initial strike. Finally, we're going to talk about the various types of lightning. So, believe it or not, but there are many types of lightning that can occur. According to Steve Lenore, the first type of lightning is called cloud-to-ground lightning, which is when an electrical charge in a cloud collects and moves toward the positively charged ground. The lightning does this by using a steep ladder where it moves towards the Earth's positive charge and the charges meet and they com complete a circuit about the ground, briefly joining to form lightning. The most common type of CG, which means clouds ground lightning, is actually negative clouds ground lightning. Once a flash from this type illuminates, you can see many forks called a branching. Sometimes, lightning will be will be able to shoot out of the cloud straight into clear air, but in reality, the bolt bends downwards to touch the ground and to complete the circuit. Next is positive cloud-to-ground lightning. This type of lightning often carries much more energy than the others, and because of this, is often from higher up in the atmosphere. Because of this increase in energy as well, you can see that it often doesn't create branches like the other and stays in one direct path towards the ground. Moreover, there is also cloud-to-cloud -cloud lightning. This is when a lightning bolt stretches between two or more separate clouds. These lightning strikes are often hard to see and are sometimes just heard as thunder because they are above the clouds. The longest cloud-to-cloud -cloud lightning strike was 440 miles long in Brazil in 2018 on Halloween. When it is overcast, it makes it hard for meteorologists to see these types of lightning, and therefore, these usually are the largest types of lightning. Then there is intercloud, which means within the same cloud. When the current travels within the same cloud, it connects areas of different charges, causing portions of the light, the cloud to light up. Two common types of intercloud lightning are sheets and heat lightning. Finally, the most interesting ball is called the ball lightning. The ball lightning is pretty hard to understand because the lightning meets up in a sphere shape. This type of lightning lasts about five to 10 seconds and it looks as it appears to be hovering above the ground or in the sky. It leaves a sulfur, burning sulfur smell along its way. 
In the slideshow behind us, you can actually see multiple types of lightning. In the top left, you can see positive clouds of ground lightning, then negative clouds of ground lightning, normal clouds of ground lightning, intercloud ground intercloud lightning, clouds of cloud lightning, and finally ball lightning. In conclusion, delving into the realm of understanding lightning, we can see a multi-factored and multi-layered interplay of physics, science, and geography. It is clear that lightning is a very powerful and intriguing natural phenomenon. So, based on what Cooper just said, it is very interesting in how lightning is made, its connection to thunder, and the various types of lightning that exist in thunderstorms all around the world. We personally believe that lightning is a very interesting concept that is essential to helping people understand the beauty of nature. So, next time you hear thunder, remember lightning came right before that. Lightning before the thunder. Thunder, thunder.